We're growing accustomed to the world's biggest physics project, CERN, in Switzerland, announcing mind-boggling discoveries, and the latest discovery, like parallel universes and new subatomic particles, sounds like it should be in science fiction. They say they've captured antimatter and stored it in a magnetised cylinder for almost 17 minutes. CERN has been trying to store antimatter so that its scientists can compare it to the elements that make up our universe. It's theorised that antimatter was around before the creation of the universe, before the Big Bang, and is somehow necessary to allow matter, the substance that makes everything we know, exist. This thing has a negative energy charge. Everything seems to work in reverse. We'll use antimatter. Why? It's a concept which has been explored in science fiction for generations. In 1968, Captain Kirk used an antimatter missile to fend off a giant entity in space. In fact, the writers of Star Trek, like the Dan Brown novel Angels and Demons, have turned to antimatter regularly to solve all sorts of cosmic conundrums. So, what is antimatter? The man who knows, Rolf Hoyer, is the director general of CERN, and he joins us live from Geneva. Um, Dr. Hoyer, uh, how do you know, if you can't see it, you can't touch it and can't smell it, that you've actually captured it? Well, we see its reactions. I mean, as you uh, eloquently described, as soon as antimatter gets into contact with matter, it annihilates its energy. We can measure this energy. It has a certain spectroscopy. And out of this, we can conclude that we have seen antimatter here. And do you know what it is? Well, we know what constituent what what pe what particles we put into our traps there like the antiprotons and the anti-electrons the positrons so we know if we create a, an, an antimatter atom there it's anti-hydrogen now that we know and then we can measure the spectral lines before the big bang it's thought that antimatter mm. and matter may have existed in equal measure that after the big bang matter us people like us things like us uh, had the predominance is that right? That's absolutely... It's quite right. It's not before the Big Bang, at the Big Bang, at the moment of the Big Bang. Matter and antimatter were created in equal quantities. But then a small asymmetry was introduced by nature, one part in 10 billion. And this one part in 10 billion, more matter, is us, is what you see around yourself and when you look into the night sky. What is your discovery going to tell us that will be of any value to any of us in the future? <clears throat> Well, that's the nice thing about basic science. Basic science has a target, namely to find out, to find more knowledge. When we can use it and in what fields we can use it, this is not clear that we cannot predict. Take, for example, uh, the discovery of, uh, of antimatter. That was around 80 years ago. Antimatter was introduced theoretically, then found a few years later, anti-electrons, the positron, and today, 80 years later, you use it in hospitals. PET, positron emission tomography, is used today regularly in hospitals for diagnosis, etc. for example, uh, for cancer investigation. So it's unpredictable. The only thing I, I really dare to predict is you can use such things at some stage uh, for mankind, well, beside uh, the knowledge which you anyhow get. As I rather um, sort of absurdly suggested, Captain Kirk in 1968 used it to bombard an enemy. I mean, isn't there a danger that you found something which could be put to evil use? No, not at the moment. Maybe my imagination is not good enough. But in order to produce, for example, the amount of antimatter which was used in the novel of uh, Angels and Demons, we need only 250 million years to produce that. And to store it for 250 million years, I mean, if you want to produce it, it's a tremendous... It's, it's, at the moment, I, I don't see any possibility there. Now, you captured... It's very I think, difficult I, I, to store I, it. I think you, you captured about 300 particles, or, uh, and right. you managed to hold them for 17 minutes. How many do you really need, yes. and how long do you want to be able to capture them for? Well, I don't think you need very, very many. I mean, it depends what the measurements uh, will reveal. What you have to find... What you want to find out is is there a difference in the behavior between matter and antimatter? And you can measure with a few atoms uh, at least some lines uh, of the, uh, some um, properties of the antimatter and compare it to the properties of matter. But if you want to do detailed investigations, you have to produce and produce and store and store because you can't store much, much longer than the 1,000 seconds, I assume. And in a word, how important is this breakthrough? 
I think it's a, it's really a very important breakthrough because um, it was not for nothing that Physics World last year gave the very first attempts, and at that time it was a storage of 170 milliseconds, uh, the physics breakthrough of the, of, the, of the year. I mean, it is the first step to understand and to investigate the difference between matter and antimatter, Professor. and to investigate and understand why we are here. Professor Hoyer, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. If you're still confused, the full facts of antimatter, why it matters, a Q&A on our website, go to channel4.com forward slash news. Lots more on Channel 4 News online at channel4.com forward slash news. We're back tomorrow at 7. Well, the matter will be back anyway, Samira and me. That's Channel 4 News. Good evening. Thank you.